Hi everybody, in this video I'm going to cover something that I've done on a number of projects and it's just a small little addition to the client grid that we worked on in the last video. And this addition is just to uh, give users the ability to hide uh, various columns in the table view. Uh, you can imagine that on some projects these tables can get quite wide and not every column is um, is important to a user at any given time. They may just want to look at a few of the columns at any at any one time and just focus on those. And so to give them the ability to hide irrelevant columns, is, it's a big deal. It really helps them out a lot. Um, and there's a few ways we can do this. I'm going to show you what I think might be one of the simplest ways. And the other thing I'm doing is going to give, um, I'm going to remember what these options are. So. Uh, if you just uh, look over to the right here, I have a settings button. We open up a modal that just shows the names of all the columns that are on display and they can just check them on and off and they they hide or, or show uh, in real time right there. Now I'm not saving these options to the database, although we could. If you had a number of users, you may have um, a number of different preferences that a user would have uh, to kind of configure the way the app looks for them. And if you're doing that, that it may make sense to save these settings within um, a larger group of settings in the database. And uh, if you're using something like Laravel, you're getting the authorized, the authenticated user on every request anyway. So it's not a big deal that after they sign in or after they make a request that you're sending back some um, some preferences or some um, user settings along with it. It's just one more field in the database that you're returning. Uh, the way I chose to do it in this video is just to save the options, the selections in local storage. And when I first started to do this, if I remember correctly, local storage wasn't available on some mobile browsers. Uh, it, it could have been, uh, it could have been, um, I can't remember which, it may have been on the iPhone, I can't quite remember. Uh, and if, you know, you'll know better for your case, if local storage isn't available, then you may just have to go with um, maybe uh, the, the database available in most browsers. I think most browsers have a database in it, um, IndexedDB, if I'm not mistaken. Again, it's been a while since I've used it. Or you may just want to save it in, uh, in your database, MySQL or something. Uh, but that's not important. Um, you should be able to adapt what I'm going to show you here for your use case. Local storage... Uh, for those who aren't too familiar with it, you can just inspect your page. You open up your, your developer tab here, uh, developer tools. Uh, you can select the application tab at the top, and then you'll see local storage on the left, and then your, your application URL. And uh, I have the options saved right here. You can see them right there. So that's it. Uh, a user can refresh the page. I'll just refresh, and the options should remain. Um, and every time that they're updated, every time a user clicks on one of these, I'm just updating the, the settings in local storage as well. So again, every time they refresh the page, the settings um, persist. So that's how it works. It's very simple, but it's, uh, it's a nice quality of life addition to something like this to help uh, make things better for your users. So let's review the code. I'm going to start at the top of the client grid.view file. Of course, like always, you'll be able to check this out uh, from GitHub. At the top, I, I just put the, the key value that I'm using for local storage uh, to save these settings. Um, I have it ln laranerds uh, underscore client grid columns. And, um, you know, if you ever need to change it, that's where you would change it. Down in our reactive state, I've added an object of columns, each uh, tag. So name first, name last, I've tried to match to basically what I'm using for uh, the fields in the database, just to keep things consistent. I have a label field just so that when a user is looking at the settings here in the modal, they have a nice, um, a nicely formatted name and they're not looking at the key, for example, name underscore first. So I have the label and then the, the Boolean is visible for each one. And then what I do is on mounted uh, lifecycle hook, I want to check local storage. So I reach into local storage to see if it has our local storage column key. And if it does, then I just merge it with the existing ones. Um, now I store the columns as a JSON string. So I call, I use JSON parse to turn it into an object again. 
and I iterate through every key in that object, and then I just update the state based on that. I don't just replace state columns with what's saved in local storage, um, because uh, I noticed that when I was doing that, the, the options are no longer reactive. Uh, I thought that was a little strange. I would have expected different from view, but when I started to uh, click on the checkboxes again after that, then I noticed my watcher wasn't firing. So if you know of why that's happening, just let me know. Otherwise, this works fine for me, just going through one key at a time and replacing uh, that particular key in our state columns uh, object is working just fine for me. Uh, now, if you're adding new keys and whatnot, you I don't know if in view three you have to do what you did in view two, which is to call view set to make a property reactive. Uh, I'm not too sure. Again, if you know that, put it down in the comments below. Uh, we'll have to figure that out, uh, cross that bridge when we come to it. Uh, but I do have a watcher set up. Now to get this watch uh, function available, you just pull it in at the top here. You import watch from view. Now here, um, whenever the value changes, so a new column is toggled on or off, then this is where I'm setting the item in local storage again. And I replace the whole object uh, in, in total. Uh, so my current state columns, however that is configured in, um, in the uh, reactive properties up here, it will just replace whatever's in local storage wholesale. Uh, everything that's checked and unchecked will be uh, will re be replaced. And notice I call JSON stringify on that. I want to store it as a string, not as um, an object, because then you'll get uh, object object in uh, local storage rather than what you actually want to save. So the next part of this was fairly simple. It was just adding the button here above the grid uh, with the settings label. When you click on it, you're opening a new modal. Uh, you've seen that uh, done in other videos, so I won't cover that here. Just opening the modal and we'll look at our settings. Uh, let's go to state columns. Where do I have that? Oh, and I should say I've added uh, a V show uh, attribute to every column header and the column itself right here just to uh, only show it if is visible is true. So that's fairly straightforward. So I have it up here for the headings and then down here where I'm iterating, iterating through each row uh, from the database. I'm hiding them or showing them based on the settings. Now the settings, it's just a very simple V4 looping through. I'm grabbing the column here, which the column, uh, this part right here is uh, the key. And then the configuration is that object that has either the label or is visible Boolean. So I'm just looping through. I set the V model to config dot is visible. So that's that will uh, make sure that the checkbox is either checked or unchecked based on the current value for the column. And um, I'm just showing the label right here. So that's really it. Uh, the watcher is set up on this again. So I make sure that whenever one of these are changed, is checked or unchecked by the user, then it's uh, persisted in local storage. Again, you can do this, uh, save this to the database if you'd want, if you want, or use the in-browser databases, depending on how you want to do things. Depends on your situation. But this is about as simple as it gets, uh, and it is, yeah, a nice improvement for users, makes things easier for them. So if you have any questions about that, if you try to get this working and you have troubles, let me know. Uh, otherwise, uh, I wouldn't mind hearing about how you uh, would implement something like this or other nice quality of, quality of life um, improvements for something like these, uh, these grids, these tables for users. I'm always looking for new ideas. In the meantime, thanks for watching. Cheers.